Hello, I'm Sunil Rao, Professor of Medicine at NYU Grossman School of Medicine and Director of Interventional Cardiology at NYU Langone Health System, both here in Manhattan, New York. The main purpose of the updated ACS guidelines that were released by the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology is really to summarize the best evidence to treat patients with both non-ST segment elevation acute coronary syndrome and ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. The last update was issued in 2013, and so since that 12-year time period, there's really been numerous randomized clinical trials that inform the way that we can improve outcomes in patients with these conditions. Yeah, so the most impactful changes really are multiple uh, changes that we've made to the guidelines, again, to reflect the latest evidence. Some of these include, for example, the management of the non-infarct artery in patients with non-ST segment elevation MI, as well as those with ST segment elevation MI, and how that difference uh, in the management between patients who come in with a stable ST elevation MI differs with respect to uh, the patients who come in with cardiogenic shock, for example. And these are uh, based on two different randomized trials reflecting those different patient populations. In addition, we have a brand new recommendation around the use of a specific micro, uh, specific mechanical circulatory support device called the microaxial flow pump. This is based on one randomized trial that was released last year. We also have an extensive section on how to manage antiplatelet therapy after the patient is ready for discharge and how to reduce bleeding risk in those patients who, for example, may require oral anticoagulation. Again, that's based on multiple randomized trials. We've also carried forward some recommendation based on the revascularization guideline that was released in 2021, giving transradial access in patients with acute coronary syndrome undergoing PCI, a class one recommendation. In addition, a new recommendation is uh, around the use of intracoronary imaging to guide stent placement, which is now given a class one level of evidence A in the new recommendation based on multiple randomized trials. I think the strategies that clinicians can use to apply these recommendations in, uh, in practice and at the bedside really is multi-pronged. The first is to make sure that the, uh, they read the guidelines and understand the evidence base. The second is that in the era of the electronic health record, many of these uh, recommendations can be systematized in terms of order sets so that they can be applied at the bedside without really a lot of clinician input. These class one recommendations should really apply to most, if not all patients. And I think an ACS protocol that's updated to reflect the latest recommendations is really the first step in implementation at the bedside. So I think the future of the guidelines is continuous updating. And that's because the evidence base evolves very, very rapidly. There are multiple randomized trials that are about to start or are ongoing that will certainly inform the future of the treatment of acute coronary syndromes. And so the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, they do have a systematic process by which the evidence is continually surveyed and updates are made to these guidelines as the body of evidence evolves. So I would encourage clinicians and providers uh, as well as administrators to read this document and be prepared for the fact that there will be another update probably in a few years that will reflect the latest evidence.